That is one way to get rid of the shadows. Did you notice that? Yes, you wear black shirts and just, well, you can't see them, <laughs> the shadows. You also, we both look slimmer. Yes, yes, I, yes, I do. And you, you're looking trimmer than ever. Thank you. I you're appreciate welcome. that. Oh, yes, anytime. All right, so title of today's video. I'm waiting. Has something to do. Yeah, it's always an adventure. <laughs> Yeah. Although I have started telling my dad in advance what I think we should talk about, so yeah. I'm getting better about that. Rental cars. Mm. Buying rental cars. What do you need to know as a consumer thinking about amidst all the Hertz news, the Avis news, the Enterprise news? What do you need to think about going into buying a rental car? And honestly, if you don't mind that, from your perspective, can you just explain why do rental cars even sell their fleet? Why does Hertz car sales exist or Avis car sales exist? Where, where would you like me to start? At the beginning. Chapter one. Why does Hertz and Avis and Enterprise and all the others, why do they sell off their cars? Yeah. Well, because they only they only use them for a limited amount of time, a year and a half, two years, maybe max three years. They, they, they lease the cars just like uh, most businesses lease their products. Um, and at a certain point, it's time to uh, <clears throat> move on, get new cars. Um, and all the manufacturers... Uh, sell directly to Hertz and Avis and the others, and uh, you know they encourage them to uh, to get new cars because it helps GM and Ford and Chrysler and whoever uh, sell and produce and deliver more cars in any given time frame. I imagine it's also a competitive advantage, right? If you're Hertz, you want to be touting your new fleet and things like that, right? Well, you know, I I, I suppose, but but you know, it's hard to tout your new fleet when. The average miles on your cars are, are forty or fifty thousand miles. Gotcha. Okay, I thought you were going to say like, I thought you were going to talk about the pandemic and how well no one's actually using rental cars anyway. But that's a whole different story. There's a pandemic. <laughs> so, so obviously these rental fleets are getting refreshed every two three years, right? Like that's the state of, of the union. Well, yeah. I mean, they they they, they probably refresh typically a third of their fleet or 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 forty percent of their fleet every year. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. So then as a consumer, if I'm thinking about buying a rental car, what do I need to be looking out for? How do I know? Let's start there. How do I know that I'm buying a rental car, that I'm showing interest in a rental car? Um, well, if you're buying a car at the Hertz used car facility or the Avis used car facility, um, there's a pretty good likelihood that you're buying one of their retired uh, rental cars. If you're buying a car from a used car dealer or a, a new car dealer's uh, used car lot, um, you would ask to see the Carfax because if it was a rental car, it will be reported on Carfax or typically is reported on Carfax as a as a rental vehicle. So there's no other way outside of Carfax to get that information. I'm thinking. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because I was I was trying to. I, was I don't know unless that, yeah. unless unless you personally try to uh, keep an eye on the half a million cars that Hertz has in their fleet. I, I don't know how else you'd be able to tell. Yeah, I don't think there's another like VIN lookup service or anything like that that'll. That tell I'm you. A, no, not, no, that, not I'm that I'm aware, aware of. But you know that that doesn't mean you know somebody smarter than me could come up. with Yeah, that. so someone comment down below if there's a yeah. VIN lookup that tells you. <laughs> The car was titled as a rental car. Or, I mean, that or, really... you, or you could comment below that you're smarter than me. <laughs> yeah, either or works. Yeah. Okay, so then uh, what do you need to look out for? Because the reason I'm asking this question is because a lot of people are interested in buying used cars right now. And rental cars seem really attractive because the prices are typically a lot lower than no other rental cars that are on the market, lease returns, things like that. So what do you need to look out for if you're actually seriously considering well, I, buying I a think rental? I, I... Well, here, let's share a story real quick, if, if we can, uh, about when when we were helping people procure cars. And I don't know, somebody helped a customer in a faraway state that begins with an A uh, get a car. And it happened to be a retired rental car. And um, the car fax was clean. Uh, the dealer didn't didn't disclose that there was any damage. The auto check was clean. The auto, That's the, the, yeah, yeah. the auto check was clean, and the dealer didn't disclose that it had been a rental car and that he had bought it from the rental company and that, I don't know, that it had damage. But 
you know, he wanted to make it right. So instead of just painting the bumper cover, he put a whole new bumper cover on it. And instead of just repairing the damage on the fender, he put a whole new fender on it. Uh, you know, which to me would indicate that maybe the damage was a little more significant than he wanted to make, make it out to be. But it wasn't until after the customer got home with the car and he took it somewhere else that they discovered that, well, it had been in an accident and it hadn't been repaired well. Um, so the first thing you'd want to do, if it were me, is I would point blank ask the dealership, is this a retired rental car? And, and get them to answer that. And, and I, I know when, when I ran dealerships that we would have the customer sign off on a Carfax so that we could keep that as part of the documents in their deal stating that we went over what the car was and how it had been used in the past and whether or not at that time uh, there had ever been an accident reported to, to Carfax on it. Um, but not all dealerships do that. But, but yes, you should ask, was it a rental car? Um, ask for a Carfax to see if it had been listed as a rental car. Uh, if you're buying it from, from Hertz uh, used car lot or, or Avis's used car lot, ask to see the service records as to how it was serviced while it was still being utilized in their, in their rental fleet. Um, you know, oftentimes people who drive rental cars don't, don't drive them as if they're their own cars. They drive them as if, well, they're somebody else's cars, and they don't give a shit about how they drive them. So the one thing you want to make sure is that they were, they were maintained in accordance with what the factory has suggested the maintenance schedule should be, so that you want to see those service records and ask them to make those available to you. If it's if it's a rental car that has gone through the auction and, and ended up on a dealer's lot, they might not have all those service records. So you would want to see the Carfax or auto check or both. Could you also ask for um, any reconditioning that the uh, that Oh, the absolutely. Yeah. yeah. You can always ask a dealership to share with you uh, their state inspection report and whatever reconditioning they did to the car. And most dealerships would be uh, proud to, to share with you what they spent the money on and, and be able to point out to you, look, we put uh, brakes all the way around that needed four tires. We bought four tires for it. Uh, there was a scratch on the front bumper. We had the front bumper repainted. So they'll be more than happy to share that with you because it, it shows that their, their intentions were good and pure and that they wanted to recondition the car so that it looked good and it was good. And so I think that's a really important point, especially, I mean, in general for used cars, but especially for rental cars right, is you're not limited to just, you know, paying for a pre-purchase inspection, which we'll get to and, and how, you know, you probably should still do that, but oh, you I can, would recommend that. But yeah. you can ask the dealer, okay, you, what bought, have you, done? Yeah, you bought this car at auction, yeah. show me the, the, the purchase orders for your reconditioning work. Yeah. And so you, if you have the service records, give me that too, please. They, they can show you the repair orders from the service yeah, the repair department. Orders, yeah. And, uh, and I'm telling you, they'll be more than happy to, to go over them line by line with you, especially when, when it ends up showing that they spent 1500 or 1800 or $2,200 to recondition the car to make it right for the lot. Would you, when you were working, would you buy cars, used cars at auctions, or when you had used car managers working for you, would, would they, that would be one of their sources, right? Would, oh, would be getting rental yes. cars from auction. Well, we wouldn't buy rental cars, but... Um, and why was that? I guess that's, that's some, actually really... Well, because we relied primarily on our trade-ins. Um, you know, this is across all the stores you worked at. Yeah, yeah, for the most part. I mean, I've, I've worked at some dealerships where, you know, we, we, we would rely on a small percentage of cars to come from the auctions, um, uh, especially a Pontiac dealership that I worked in in Mesa, Arizona, where, well, the vast majority of our pre-owned cars came from auctions, and the vast majority of them turned out to be rental cars. And and what really turned out to be a, a good profit center for us was, well, we had our used car manager go to the auctions in Hawaii and actually ship the cars from Hawaii because he could buy them really cheap in Hawaii and even with the cost of getting them to the dealership it was still less than you could buy them for at the uh, auctions that were stateside. What year was this? Uh, it was in the uh, 90s. You, I love that because 
you make it so easy for your sound engineer to figure out how to how to parse that little sound. <laughs> yeah, that was in the. Well, I'm trying to remember. It was in the nineties. Yeah. Wow, that's craziness. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, and, and you you remind that's when, me. That's when I first really came into contact with keys and things of that nature. Um, yeah, but yeah, so many of our cars at that Pontiac store came came from auctions from the Western United States and Canada and uh, Hawaii. And and you reminded me of a dealer that I had worked with in that area as well, a Mitsubishi dealership in Arizona, where I was talking to the general manager. This was back when we used to buy cars for, yeah. you know, help people buy cars. Um, and his whole entire lot was full of uh, auctioned cars, auction cars yeah. that he bought because who's buying a new Mitsubishi? Who's buying yeah. a new Pontiac, you know? Here's, here's, here's the real key to remember. Uh, when it comes to auction cars. Um, is this rental car specific or just This is just auction cars. You have to remember that you were always the guy that paid the most. Okay? Yours was the last hand up at, at the auction and paid the most for that given car. It's, it's cheaper typically to trade cars right than to go to the auction and buy a car and know that you were the high bidder. Uh, and then have to pay the auction fees and then have to pay the transport fees to get them to the dealership and then start getting into the reconditioning work. But if if you go to Hawaii and you buy them really cheap, then you can afford to do all that and then the risks are, are mitigated. But trust me, dealers would be more than happy to share the repair orders with you as to what they've done to recondition the cars and bring them up to spec before they put them on the lot for sale. And I think that's a really important piece of advice is yeah. ask for that. Now, one of the questions I have is, are you going to find a better deal buying directly from Hertz or Avis or Enterprise versus one of these cars that there was a high bidder at auction that reconditions? What, what would you, your recommendation well, I, be? I, I would think that as a customer, the question I would ask is, why would some of Hertz's fleet go to auctions and why would others go to their used car lots? And what would the criteria be for which ones went to the sale? Now, I'm thinking, and I don't know this for a fact because I never worked for Hertz, I never worked for Avis, but if I was running their used car stores, well, the cars that I would recommend that go to the auction were the ones that had accidents, that there were issues with, um, those are the ones that I would send to the sale, yeah. uh, the ones that were higher mileage, um, that had interior problems or exterior paint issues. The ones that were in better shape, I don't know, call me crazy, but those are the ones I'd want to keep for myself um, for our used car facility if I was running a, a Hertz or an Avis used car facility. So you got to believe that if you're buying one of the cars from their facilities, that those are the cars that were in better condition than the ones that they actually sent to the sale. Yeah. So then in, in terms of yeah. price, and, and this ties in with resale value, that's another reality of buying a rental car, right? Is that the resale value is going to be negatively impacted. For, Typically, because the, they, like, they, have, they have more miles on them than, than the average car might have for the year. And also some of these other things that we just talked about. Oh, I mean, yeah. The, but the that can happen on a trade. No, but I so so my yeah. Volvo has seventy three thousand miles on it, but I still think it holds a higher resale value than if it had seventy three thousand miles and previously been a rental as well. Do you agree or disagree? Um. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I, yes, yes. To make you feel better, I agree. No, it's and not no, to make no, me feel and, better. And, and the reason I agree is is because there is a certain stigma attached to the car. If it says rental on the car fax. That, that's what I'm, yes. like, like we talked Although about. Although we, the, the supposition was when you got your car and it was really, and, and it still is a really, really beautiful, magnificent automobile. And it was one year old when you got it. Yeah. And it had 40 some thousand miles on it. And the only thing we could figure was that the guy did a one-year lease, and I don't know, it was a drug dealer running between New York and Florida the whole time. Because how else could you put like 41,000 <laughs> miles in the car in like, I don't know, 15, 16 months? No, um, for sure. Yeah. So the good news for Zach is that, that Carfax doesn't put on there probably a drug dealer's <laughs> car. Because uh, if it had that, well, then maybe it would be worth more because people are going to search the car to 
find out where the cocaine was hidden. Yeah, okay. Um, Sorry. <laughs> no. Sorry, sorry, I digress. <laughs> no, but I think your point about stigma is really important. Right? Yeah, because actually, let me even let me throw it back to you. Put your dealer hat back on. If you were doing this, the used car buying, yes, you would value it less, right? Yes, of course, exactly. So yes. I think it's important that as a consumer, if you're going to go this route, you're buying a used car and you're thinking, I'm going to buy a, front, a previous rental car. The resale value is going to be negatively impacted, just like we talked about with a previously yes, damaged car. Yes. So, but but having said that, the retail value that you pay should be less than what it normally would be because it was a rental car. exactly yes. yes so that so that the the savings up front would would override the uh, loss of value later on because it was given to you up front it's going to be throughout the yeah. lifetime yes. of the vehicle yes you know because people say to me well well what if i buy a car that's a I don't know, a brand new 2019 and it's 2020. Yeah, aren't I going to get hurt more uh, when I go to trade it in? Well, no, it'll have a year's worth of less miles on it than one that was sold early on in the model year. So you make up for it that way. Gotcha. So that's when another you, example yeah, of, of, of how you can make up for it when you trade it in. Yeah. Yeah. And I would question if you're really making up for it. It's just well, the value the, the is. The compensation is there. Yeah, in terms of you're going to pay less up front yes, for it, and it's yes. going to be there through the lifetime. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so if you're thinking about buying a used car, yeah. these are all, uh, a used rental car, excuse me, these are all considerations that you should have. Yes. And I guess the final or kind of parting shot I'd ask you is, would you buy a rental car? Would you have, let's say for, for me or my sister, Dyer, like for our first cars or for a car in general, for mom when she was you know around a drive, would you have bought a rental car? I never have for personal use. Um, other than, uh, you know, I, I, I bought retired service loaners from our dealerships. And service loaners are very different than rental cars. Well, not really. You know, I, I, no, well, they're, they're different in the sense that the dealers don't keep them in the fleet as long as rental car companies do. And, and so they don't have as many miles on them. Um, but. You know the people that drive them. I, I will never forget. I will. I will share a story from my past. Story time. When, when I was at uh, um, Scottsdale Acura at 68th and McDowell Roads in in Scottsdale, Arizona, and right across the street from us was our Jaguar uh, Porsche Bentley store, and um, a, nice a, a rather a rather famous basketball player um, dropped off his Bentley for service. And, well, that store bought Acura Integras from our Acura store to use as their service loaners. And the area vice president wanted to know, who was that crazy person driving that Integra at an ungodly speed out of the Bentley parking lot? And it happened to be a, a basketball player for the Phoenix Suns. Um, and I guess he didn't feel as if an Acura Integra was the right type of service loaner to be getting. And so, well, he just beat the, beat the crap out of the car because, well, it wasn't his. And honestly, um, lots of customers probably do that to, their, to the service loaners because they're not theirs. Uh, I remember one time uh, at the mini store when, well, I don't know, somebody actually drove one into the ditch, literally into a ditch. And, uh, and and then had it towed to the dealership and didn't think they should be responsible for the damage that they did to the car. <laughs> well, it, well, it went into the ditch. Well, why? Well, I don't, I, maybe I wasn't paying attention, but why is it my fault? Why does my insurance company have to pay? Um, because you were driving it, yeah. and it was covered by your insurance company while you were driving it. So you, you have to realize that, that even service loaners might not get treated as nicely as, as we'd like them to be treated. But typically, they come out of service loaner fleet at, at 6,000 or 7,000 miles or even less. Gotcha. So so you've bought service loaners. But you've, several. But you've not bought rental cars. So I think yes. that's a bit, uh, that's some insight for our audience. And you're going to pay a bit more of a premium on a service loaner than you would on a rental car, again, because that stigma we talked yes. about. Yes. But it is another option out yes. there. Yes. Awesome. Yes. Yes. All right. Yes. How did I do? I think we got to work on looking at the camera more. There you go. You look good. Such a, you know, he, he, he shifted my position and because I like to look at the person that I'm talking to. So when, I sat, person, when, I, when I sat over here 
and he sat where I'm sitting, I could be looking at him and also looking at the camera at the same time. And besides, the other side of my face is my Hollywood side. And, and, <laughs> And, 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 and I don't know, the director here decided, well, you need to see my worst side and make me uncomfortable. I, I don't get it. Can we do I a just, watch update? I, a watch update. Uh, here we go, folks. I'm taking this one off um, because this one's interesting. It's, it's, you, it's see-through in, every, in every direction. See-through in every direction. This is called SIGA design. It's wow. a skeleton watch. Um, it made out of titanium and God knows what else. Um, and it's very comfortable and very lightweight and um, relatively inexpensive because, well, I'm very cheap. <laughs> and if you work at Sega and you want to pay him to say those things, he'll be more send than happy more to watch. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, send me more watches. Send me more. I'm okay with that. Okay, that's enough self-promoting for one day. I apologize for that. Which, in all honesty, we have no sponsorships of yeah. any sort. And if we're going to get one, it should be from like a wine club, just to make the hilarious I, amount of wine. I, I, I have, I have apparently three uh, addictions in life: watches, because I always like to know what time it is. Uh, <laughs> I'm a, I'm a sneakerhead. Uh, Zach can attest that I have many, many pairs of sneakers, and I'm particularly addicted to Adidas. And, um, and then uh, my wine clubs, uh, just so that the wine racks can look full, because I never drink any of this shit. So there you have it. All right, we'll be back at it tomorrow. We've got the used car update coming on Saturday, so stay tuned for that. Yes, and uh, we'll be back in touch soon. Okay. Uh, bye.